Okay, after a lot of requests for a sequel to Ash's AI Adventures, I suppose we should find out how things would pan out in Johto. For anyone who didn't see the first installment, there's a link in the description, but here's a quick run through of what I'm doing here. Using prompts to guide it, I'm getting Inferkit to rewrite Ash Ketchum's story. The AI uses a neural network to generate text predicting what should come next. In Kanto, Ash's story was one of tragedy, death, and general chaos. The conclusion saw Ash Ketchum being gunned down by prison guards while biting Giovanni to death, as you would probably expect. So I suppose we'll have to start this video off with a revival of some kind? Three minutes after being pronounced dead from his wounds, Ash Ketchum was resuscitated by Maya. Thanks to a loophole in Kanto region laws, he was deemed to have served his death sentence. Upon his release, Officer Jenny informed him that it was in his best interest to leave Kanto and never return. So, with all of his Pokemon seized by the police and nothing left for him in Kanto, Ash boarded his ship headed for Olivine City in Johto. Back in Johto, Ash made the trip to Beach Beach Resort to keep himself from going crazy on the ship. To keep himself from throwing himself overboard, Ash put in a daily shift at the resort's ice cream shop, Sandy's Ice Cream Parlor. Once Ash made the perilous journey into the ocean, he swam out to an island that had a nearby beach. As luck would have it, he caught a Teddy Ursa along the way, and after calling the neighbouring beach a beach, it was christened by Ash <laughs> to be called Sand Beach Beach. Okay, pretty successful star, we've got Ash's first Johto Pokemon, a Teddy Ursa. Upon returning to Olivine City with Teddy Ursa, Ash Ketchum was greeted by Officer Jenny. She gave Ash his starter Pokemon, Pichu. Ash said that Pichu is a baby, but once he's a bit bigger, he'll play with all the other starter Pokemon. He'll be a good player. Officer Jenny wanted to see Pichu in action, so she called for Pichu. Pichu is a bystander Pokemon. It's a Pokemon that stays by the side of its trainer without battling. Okay, we're building up a team pretty quickly here. We now have Teddy Ursa and Pichu. Having decided to take on the Johto Gym Challenge, Ash searches for the Olivine Gym Leader, Professor Norman. Read on to find out how. What is Norman? Professor Norman, also <laughs> known as Professor Poop, is a short, balding, middle-aged man with a yellow lab coat. Honestly, that feels a bit childish from the AI, but I'll take it. After they meet, Ash asks Professor Norman for a gym battle. He graciously accepts, telling Ash that he'll be using his first Pokemon, Totodile. Ash asks Professor Norman if Totodile will fight while sleeping. Okay, we were just trying to get a grasp on what Pokemon he would be using, so let's move on. The Alvine gym battle between Ash's Teddy Ursa and Norman's Totodile was a tense one. Just before the end of the battle, Norman used his final Pokemon, <laughs> Simpoleon. Simpoleon used Screech as its final move. Ash knew it wasn't possible for Simpoleon to use another move after Screech. He rushed in and tried to attack Simpoleon with a water gun. However, Simpoleon used Swift. It attacked Ash and Ash didn't stand a chance. Ash screamed out in pain, his entire arm was covered in blood. He knew it was over, he could feel the blood pouring down his body. Ash sat down on the ground and continued to cry in pain. He was actually crying for the first time ever, he thought. That's a bit sad, both of his parents died last time. Ash tried to get up and looked at Simpoleon in the air. Simpoleon turned his head <laughs> and let out a very clear, No! Ash lost it, he started crying even harder. Simpoleon pulled out a large sword from its, <laughs> from its belly and came down. It slashed Ash's arm with full force. Ash fell back into the stadium and tears started falling down his face. Simpoleon hit him hard with the sword. Ash <laughs> held his bleeding arm and closed his eyes. Ash fell back and held his arm as he was starting to lose blood quickly. The referee approached him and yelled at Ash, let the members of the championship race decide your success. The referee then waved his flag. Ash's arm dropped to his side as he looked down. He didn't move. He just lay there, covered in blood. Tears started to fall down his face as he started to shake. The referee told Ash, You are the winner of the Olivine Gym. From now on, you are the champion. Well, that was a pretty wild gym battle. I don't know... <laughs> I don't know where or why it came up with Simpoleon. <laughs> is that a split evolution from Primplup or is that like an evolution? It's tough to say. I'm picturing like a. <laughs> I'm picturing kind of Empoleon like, I guess. Anyway, that sounds like it didn't go too well for Ash, but he did win, so let's move on. Norman visited Ash in the hospital the following week. Having recovered from his wounds, he was ready for visitors. I'm so sorry for Simpoleon's behaviour, Ash, Norman said apologetically. My disqualification was well-deserved. 
I'm beginning to understand why everyone calls me Professor Boop. I hope this can somewhat make up for it. Norman pulled out a gym badge and handed it to Ash. You've earned this. It's called the Nibelung badge. I believe you can call it anything you want, as long as you call it your gym badge. Okay, pretty weird start to this one. No deaths yet though, just a serious injury. Now that he's earned his first Johto gym badge and recovered from his injuries, Ash decides to head for... Ecritique City, with his new partner Pikachu. And so our adventure begins. Okay, that's incredibly fitting. That's the next town over. And I guess Pichu evolved, without us knowing? I mean, that's the only explanation. It can't just be that this AI thinks Ash still has Pikachu, because he doesn't. Uh, he never had a Pikachu, actually. With his newly evolved Pikachu and Teddy Ursa on hand, Ash Ketchum makes a pit stop on his way to Ecritique City. He enters the Pokémon and runs into a rather random man wearing a funny brown costume who thanks Ash for coming to save the day in a loud voice. Ash's legs are badly crushed and Ash feels his mind go blank. His, fa <laughs> his father appears in his mind's eye and instructs him to run away. <laughs> it's such a cruel thing to do after his legs have just been crushed. Okay, we've gotten quite off track already. In Ecritique City, Ash and Misty cross paths with the local gym leader, Drayden. Brock runs in and tries to battle Drayden. Brock shows off his newly evolved Sviper. <laughs> Ash's two-on-two -two battle with Drayden sees his Pikachu and Teddy Ursa facing off against the gym leaders Houndour and Houndoom. Ash tries using his Pikachu's Thunderbolt attack to catch the rest of his team, but Drayden's Pokemon appears to have been unaffected. Ash charges his electrified Pikachu in its stomach and unleashes a Pikachu attack, which sends it flying into the air, and Drayden's Pokemon appears to have been likewise unaffected. Drayden gives Pikachu a speedy recovery. The start of this battle was a bit all over the place. The battle between Ash's Teddy Ursa and Pikachu and Drayden's Houndour and Houndoom was short-lived as Ash's Pikachu beat all three <laughs> all three of them. Pikachu took the three <laughs> the three dragons down to defeat while the two dragons fainted, but Ash didn't know which one. The battle was finally over and Ash was relieved, but he lost his friend, Kami. Kami was hurt in the battle, but Ash had nothing to say to him about it. All Ash was worried about was his friend and if he could save him. I guess Kami is the Teddy Ursa, it's not totally clear. Congratulations, Ash. That was a very impressive performance, Drayden grumbled, handing over a gym badge. This is the badge badge <laughs> that you have earned for the Boulder Badge competition, but this is not the last badge. I think he's probably aware of that. So, <laughs> Drayden, not the most inventive with the names. After adding the badge badge to his case, Ash leaves Ecritique City behind and heads off with Teddy Ursa, Pikachu, and Misty. They decide to head for the next gym, which is in Cianwood City. Before they head off, Ash explains to them that due to the amount of Pokemon he has, he has no choice but to switch them all out. Misty, however, seems unhappy about this and they agree to share their Pokemon with each other. Pikachu is Ash's first Pokemon, Darion. Darion is a mysterious Pokemon that Ash and Brock encounter in their travels. So is Darion one of Misty's Pokemon? He first appears at the Zatu Flight Academy in at Critique City. Ash gives him a fly Pokemon card <laughs> that allows him to fly. As far as Ash knows, the only Pokemon that can, <laughs> that can fly is Flygon, that's the only one. But after seeing Darion do some tricks, Ash suspects that Darion might not be a Flygon. Darion only appears briefly in the episode, where he attends the clinic in the center of the city that Brock goes to. Okay, <laughs> so Darion is possibly another evolution. We've, we've added Oh, maybe Sympoleon is like the fairy? No, we've got a fairy type evolution. Sympoleon is like the dragon type, and Darion is the flying type evolution. Ash swaps his Teddy Ursa and Pikachu for Misty's Darion and Arcanine. At that point, Pikachu starts to feel the brunt of a flashback to the battle against. We can probably just stop that there. The main thing we needed was what Pokemon Ash now has, which is a Darion and an Arcanine. All we know for sure about Darion is that it it's not a Flygon, or at least Ash thinks it's not a Flygon. As Ash and Misty arrive in Cianwood City, the Pallet Town native gets down to training with his two new Pokemon, Darion and Arcanine. While they're working, the Cianwood gym leader, Rosalyn, will also arrive to collect her badge from the pair. So, who is Rosalyn? It might surprise to learn that this eccentric gym leader was a late addition to the Pokemon world. 
After being part of a Drayden experiment to create a team of powerful Pokemon, she developed multiple superpowers. Wait, is Rowlin a Pokemon? In Pokemon Black and White, the pink-haired gym leader has finally managed to master her powers, but she has only returned to the Pokemon world to help battle Team Rocket. Ash and Misty head straight to Cianwood to battle Rosalind. The three-headed pink-haired Pokemon will also be <laughs> out on the town looking for something to drink, so make sure to <laughs> hang out and watch the show. Gotta catch them all! Will there be a Pokemon gathering at the local Pokemon gyms this month? More likely than not. It looks like Niantic has plans to celebrate the fan favorite event through the company's own event. Got a bit off track there. Uh, so the gym leader in Cianwood City is a three-headed pink-haired Pokemon called Rosalind, <laughs> who has superpowers and was created as part of the Drayden experiment. Drayden's coming up again. I do like that the AI somehow keeps <laughs> certain characters popping up again and again. Rosalind, the three-headed, pink-haired, super-powered Pokémon who leads the Cianwood Gym, battles Ashes, Darion, and Arcanine using her two-star Pokémon. Magnolia, the Black Mill Tank, and Butterfree is a clear inspiration to our favorite transforming. Do I want to carry this on? It's probably going to get very confused. I like the name Magnolia for a Black Mill Tank. I'm not sure where this Black Mill Tank came from. I like the idea of it, though. Rosalind's Mill Tank and Butterfree take on Ash's Darion and Arcanine, with her superpowers making the battle interesting. But Rosalind disappears. But she has a special badge. Oh, but that doesn't explain where the badges are. Why doesn't the system explain to Rosalind what the badges mean? And so, Ash and Rosalind are no longer on the battlefield, but Ash, Rosalind's egg handler, he's back in the battle. But the battle has taken its course. Ash wins, Ash wins, Ash wins, Ash wins, Ash wins. He is won, and he is won because Ash wins. Because Rosalind is incomplete. No, it's, no, she's complete. Rosalind wins. Oh, so the egg that Rosalind has won, that egg is an egg. This was just all over the place. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this one, it was like five minutes long. I, the AI, would like to apologize for that one. I believe Ash won the battle and as a result, Rosalind uses her telekinesis to float a badge over to him. This is called the Equivalency Standard Badge, Ash, <laughs> Ash explains. As far as I can see, it's a reflection of how Ash and Rosalind compare to one another. Right now, I would say they are far superior to one another. How does that even make sense? How can two people be far superior to one another? Having earned the Nibelung Badge in Olivine, the Badge Badge in Ecrotique, and the Equivalency Standard Badge in Cianwood, Ash Ketchum decides to go after a fourth badge in Goldenrod City. However, by the time he arrives, he knows he'll probably only get one more badge. Why does he think that? <laughs> He's only got three so far. The first three gym battles have been a bit chaotic, but I think we can get another five. On his way to Goldenrod City, Ash catches a third Pokemon, a Smeargle in the Petalburg Woods, and raises it. Trivia. Ash received a Smeargle in his Pokedex. It's a fun bit of trivia for you. I like that the AI throws that in sometimes, you know? You need that to lighten up all the death and murder. Ash's Smeargle knows four moves. Smack Smack, <laughs> Smeargle Smash, Stealth Rock, and Stealth Rock Blast. Smack Smack is an effective one, as it can get it out of situations where it would be damaged too badly to continue, while Smeargle Smash can recover a lot of its lost health. Smeargle's other two moves can be upgraded to Wave Dash and Smeargle Spin. Wave Dash gives <laughs> Smeargle Spin access to its ultimate move, Spinarak Spin. That's a pretty classic moveset. I think most people run that when they use Smeargle. You know, Smack Smack, Smeargle Dash, Wave Dash, all that stuff. Uh, and then Spinarak Spin is just a classic. Although Ash does win a gym badge in Goldenrod City, his time there is mostly notable for his one altercation with the evil Brock. Ash has some dialogue that in context actually suggests he should have been a bully when he was younger. The fight results in Ash wearing a bloody nose, which later leads to Ash having a huge heart-to-heart -heart with Brock. Brock acknowledges that he has an overbearing personality that Ash admires, and tells Ash that he's actually come to like him quite a bit as a result of battling him. Ash makes one further comment about the friendship, and Brock tells Ash that his family has given him a lot to consider. Ash now has become a decent person, so Brock <laughs> respects him. He has also accepted that he has to fight Ash in order to be the leader of the region. The only annoying bit was Ash and Gary starting a snowball fight at the end. 
Then there were a bunch of bored children who seemed to think the whole Pokemon training thing was a waste of time. For the second season, they changed the ending. That's actually really weird, because this is sort of the second season of this, and we did have to change the ending. <laughs> it's like the AI knows, and it's not happy that I mixed up its perfectly crafted story to change it so that Ash survives. Back to that gym battle though. In Goldenrod City, Ash beat the local gym leader, Judge. He was a relatively weak gym leader, but he was a powerful Pokemon master, earning himself the name of Judge. <laughs> Even with his weakness, Ash managed to defeat him. Surely his weakness would help Ash defeat him. It makes it sound like his weakness was also his strength. Wow, that's poetic. Good work, AI. The win over Judge earns Ash his fourth Johto gym badge. My name is Judge, the gym leader mouthed. This right here is called the Badge of Precedence, and it is where we acknowledge the authority of the Chief Judge, as I have. Okay, I guess Ash is now the Chief Judge, because he's got the Badge of Precedence? This video is going to be like <laughs> over an hour long if we don't speed things up a small bit. Over the next few months, Ash traveled through Azalea Town and Violet City with many major things happening. Firstly, he caught a Pokeball and became a trainer, catching a low punny and naming it Bubbles. Secondly, he was kidnapped by Team Rocket, who brought him to their base and murdered Nurse Joy. Come on, Team Rocket. Ash managed to escape and fought the group in the main base. He was helped out by several other trainers, including Casey and Gary. Thirdly, he caught the legendary Pikachu, and the owner of the Sinnoh Gym, Rex, evolved the Pikachu and named it Rex. <laughs> Fourthly, he caught the Fire Badge. Ash returned to Petalburg and gave Pikachu to Brock, who gave it to Dawn. <laughs> Brock has evolved into Max. Ash and Dawn then traveled to Ilex Forest, where Ash fought and defeated Piplup. As Dawn evolved Frostlash, Ash... <laughs> As Dawn evolved Frostlash, Ash evolved Venusaur to Glaceon. Ash went to Viridian City, where Ash battled him in his first gym battle. Upon arriving, he met Madame Mystery, who <laughs> gave him his first Pokémon, a Noctowl. How is that his first Pokémon? Ash fought against Norman, who used his own Apom, and Stu, who used Sandshrew in the gym until Brock and the other contestants arrived. They started a gym battle until Nurse Joy appeared to heal them. Sadly, I think that's a different Nurse Joy, like a cousin or a sister, and not the one that Team Rocket murdered. There's just too much to unpack there, my favourite bit of which was Brock evolving into Max. <laughs> if anything, you would think Max would evolve into Brock. The fire badge Ash won in Azalea Town was earned when he defeated the local gym leader, Cassandra, helping her out in her coal fishing contest after she was knocked <laughs> knocked out by a coal fish. You know, that's that just makes sense to me. Before leaving Violet City, Ash took down the local gym leader, Mrs. Ketchum. Afterwards, the group set off towards Violet City again, hopefully with the power of the badge in their minds. Posts 574. Wow, these are some great reviews. Okay, the AI can't just throw that out there and then not explain it. We need some backstory here because as far as I'm aware, Delia Ketchum is dead. That, that was my understanding. When Ash learns that his mother is still alive, he pleads with her for an explanation. After the gym battle, his mother, Delia, opens up and tells him the whole story behind her apparent passing. As Ash would learn, Delia was in fact murdered and she had been hiding her true fate all along. Ash learns that Professor Elm had been murdered as well, and the murderer hid both bodies in his family's cottage in the woods. The murderer had brought Delia's body back to the cottage, leaving his father's body in the forest. <laughs> his father <laughs> had been hiding in the attic, hiding in the sheets that held his mother's body. Jesus Christ. By picking up the ball, Ash would allow the man who would be his forever self, his dad, to climb back <laughs> down to the other side, as a reward, the man would never let Ash's mother's killer get away with murder. Who the hell is the man in this context? Ash decides to venture back into the world to confront his father. When he asks his mother for help, Delia refuses as she wants to stay hidden from the world. She doesn't want to be him. His dad convinces her otherwise, and his mother enters the cottage with Ash. In the attic, Ash's father comes to life and reveals his true face revealing his own mourning for his wife and a deep sadness at the way he treated his son. Ash eventually learns that his father has loved and cared for him all along. He was hiding out in the, she <laughs> in the sheets in the attic, unable to face the world. He was trying to punish himself for killing Delia, 
and trying to forget his son when he was the man in the cottage in the woods? The man, Will, what is Will doing here? Offers to show Ash where his father has been hiding. Ash quickly finds his father's body buried under the sheets of the bed. Ash refuses to believe that his father had intentionally hurt him. He begs Will to let him see his father's face so he can finally see the person he was, not the man he'd hidden. Will opens the sheet and reveals that the man was his real father. His real father had cared deeply for him all along and had truly loved him. Ash decides to leave his father's body where it is and go with Will back to his real home, the real world. He's discovered that he had a wife and son as well, but he's too late to see them. Mysteriously, Will promises Ash that he will find his family and make things right. Then Ash discovers that the real father Will was talking about was himself. Ash and Will were both given away and given a new name to hide from their true identities. Ash leaves the cottage for the last time, with Will following close behind, promising to make his life better. With his mother back at home, Ash decides to return to his journey. At the starting town, he races with others to a bonfire to celebrate the new start. He celebrates with a few of his old friends before heading off to the gym and the unknown. Whew. Okay, does anyone have any idea what happened there? Because I'm very confused. Is Will Ash's dad? And did he murder his mom? And who's alive? The only thing I, I know for sure at the end of all that is that Professor Elm is dead. Everything else is up in the air. Or is Will Ash's brother? The AI made a lot of bold claims there, and I don't know what to believe. I think Proud Ketchum murdered Delia Ketchum and then hid in a sheet with her body for a long time by the sounds of it. But I don't know what Will was doing. I don't know who murdered Professor Elm. I don't know why someone murdered Professor Elm. Mostly that's just confused me more than anything. But I think Ash's mom is alive somehow. Uh, not sure how she didn't explain it very well. And his dad is dead or Will, one of the two. After finishing her incredibly confusing story, Delia Ketchum handed her son a gym badge. I'm sorry for whatever that was. This is your reward for beating me in battle. It's called the Badge of Excellent Victory. Misty gave Delia an approving nod and told her son to keep it up. <laughs> I like even though I'm not mentioning that Misty's there, everyone just knows that she's still there. On the long trip from Violet City to Mahogany Town, Ash gets in some training with Darion, Arcanine, Smeargle, Lopunny, and Glaceon. While they're training, Ash throws the coconut <laughs> at Misty's head. She then snatches it out of the air and throws it back at him. Speedy girl, Misty. Misty loves her ice cream. On the ride to Mahogany Town, Misty thinks back to her early days in Kanto when she first met Ash. <laughs> Unless there's another coconut fight involved, I don't want to know about it. <laughs> what was that? After suffering a concussion during the coconut fight, Ash accidentally tells his darkest secret to the Mahogany Gym Leader. Bonnie Jackson. <laughs> Along with Pikachu, she faints and ends up being hospitalized. Casting of Mahogany took two months to complete. According, <laughs> According to Nicolas Cage, he played the main character, Ash Ketchum. Quentin Flynn, who previously worked with Cage on Raising Arizona and What's Eating Gilbert Grape, played his rival Brock, another main character. Nicolas Cage as Ash Ketchum is inspired casting. I can't, I, I'm not surprised it took two months to complete. I mean, you just need to nail that. I think that might be a spoiler for the Netflix live action adaptation, actually. Following their double discharge from the hospital, Ash and Bonnie Jackson have their gym battle with Ash's Smeargle, Lopunny, and Glaceon taking on Bonnie Jackson's Ivysaur, Lopunny, and Ivysaur. <laughs> it seems that the possibility of Ash and Bonnie's hug becoming like a circle is very much exaggerated as Ash narrowly wins against Bonnie, giving him a Pokemon back. After the battle, Blue walks up to them saying, Sorry you guys. He then says, Hey, you got a lot of Pokemon at your disposal now. Ash replies, Yeah. And Blue congratulates them on their progress. Good conversation. The getting a Pokemon back, that could go either way. Maybe he got, like, Pikachu back for Misty. Or, potentially, he now looks a bit like a Laron. Like he's just got humps up his back. We can't really tell. Bonnie Jackson hands Ash a badge. Congratulations, Ash. This is a token of your victory. It's called the Champion Badge. Oh, thanks, Ash responds with a slight smile on his face. You're great. Well, what a lovely time these two had together. They hugged 
Ash thinks she's great. He did hospitalize her by telling her a secret, maybe that he was being played by Nick Cage, I, I can't really tell. It's just occurred to me that Ash also got a knock towel in that long bit earlier, and I forgot to put it in his team, so that's probably the Pokemon he just got back. After forgetting that he had a knock towel for a while, Ash decided to attempt to bond with the flying type. On the road to Blackthorn City, Ash and Noctowl went to many different types of skies that were quite reminiscent to the skies of New Barktown. Along the way, Ash learned what Noctowl had done during the last battle with Drake and what Drake had done to him. Once at the gym, Ash explained his injuries to Ludicolo and realized that he would be going into battle against Drake. I guess Drake is the Blackthorn gym leader? In the Blackthorn City gym, Ash learns that it'll be a full battle for the badge. Against Ash's Darion, Arcanine, Smeargle, Lopunny, Glaceon, and Noctowl, Drake uses the team of Ludicolo, Jellicent, Miltank, and Slowpoke. After a long battle, Ash beats Drake, earning the admiration of Gyarados, the Hyper Beam Master. Meanwhile, Ash finds out that his rival, Shane, has been kidnapped by Drake. Ash and Pikachu must travel to where the only Pokemon safe from Drake's power is. There, Ash battles Darmanitan, Masamune, and Torterra. After defeating Darmanitan, Ash and Pikachu are unable to bring his unconscious friend back, leaving them stranded in an iceberg where their only hope is the legendary Pokemon Regigigas. After returning to the surface, Ash must battle Regigigas in order to rescue Shane and the only Pokemon safe from Drake's power. Ash must also find other Pokemon like Donphan and Feraligator. Ash then is able to complete his mission by rescuing Shane. Okay, very confusing. Incredibly so. I don't know who Shane is. Drake is a gym leader and also a kidnapper. That's probably pretty common, I guess. Very confused though. Drake apologizes for kidnapping Shane and then hands over the final Johto gym badge. Sorry about all that, Ash. You've earned this badge. It's called the rare badge and it's never easy. Drake suddenly disappears. Ash and the two teens become aware of a flashing light appearing from under a rock on the beach. The flash reveals two beached sharks and a mysterious figure emerging from them. The figure, who calls himself Drake, explains that he found the two shark Pokemon who somehow drifted ashore and he brought them to the beach. <laughs> I don't know. Drake is a real mystery. He's for some reason decided to pull off this prestige-like prank that involves in him finding two beached Sharpedos, presumably. Are there any other shark Pokemon? Not that I can think of. Having earned all eight Johto Gym Badges, Ash heads to Silvertown to compete in the League Conference. On his way there, he witnesses Team Rocket's airship crash into the Lake of Rage. Ash is shocked to discover Meowth alive as he was presumed dead in the crash. Ash decides to take me out to Professor Oak for treatment, and he boards Oak's boat to Professor Oak Island, a small island far off the coast of Hoenn. It is revealed to be a rubber monster on the meteorite that has the power to turn anything living into rubber. <laughs> Ash was kidnapped by Maxi, who had used a magic spell to change himself into a rubber monster. <laughs> Pikachu was also a victim of the spell, and the monster replaced Pikachu in Ash's Pokeball. Ash then returns to Pallet Town to give the Lumina Orb to his Squirtle. Oh my god, that was so confusing, and it's <laughs> it's probably largely gonna get cut, because what on earth was that? In the pre-screening qualifying rounds of the Silver Conference, Ash Ketchum battled two opponents to survive in advance. His first opponent was Knuckles the Colossus from Team Aqua. Ash defeated Knuckles with the help of everyone at the Baroque Hall. During the second match, Ash defeated Pike the Sea Pirate and advanced to the next round of qualifying. Ash's second opponent was Joe Flint from Team Galactic. Ash defeated Joe to advance to the Silver Conference Finals. Ash faced off against Mayflower Ashura and defeated him. Mayflower Ashura's friend Raxel was waiting in the post-screening semi-finals. He proceeded to destroy Ash in a single hit using Water Fall and defeated him. Mayflower Ashura then went on to the Silver Conference and advanced to the Galactic Conference. At the Galactic Conference, Mayflower Ashura faced off against Wally Mime and defeated him. Mayflower Ashura then faced off against Lavender Town's own Lance Mountain. <laughs> Lance Mountain is the best name. I was really just going for like the, the pre-screening bit, but we got the whole conference there. 
Somehow, Ash knocked out Mayflower Ashura, but Mayflower Ashura then went on to win the conference. I don't really understand how that happened, but that's just how the Silver Conference goes sometimes. After that disappointingly fast end to the Silver Conference, Ash doesn't know what to do with himself. With Darion, Arcanine, Smeargle, Lopunny, Glaceon, and Noctowl out of their Pokeballs, Ash thanks them for helping him travel through Johto without murdering anyone. After throwing a wobbly goodbye <laughs> to Frolish, Ash and the gang leave the building, leaving Lucian alone once more. He prepares himself for one more thing to do and soon leaves the underground. Ash tries to decide what to do. Since the blood inside his body burns with a lust for blood, he feels very horny, but he has to try to settle down or else he'll end up killing everyone in the area. Suddenly, Ash spots something coming in through the hole in the wall and rushes outside. In his eagerness, he falls through the hole and lands in a large beach area. Immediately, he wonders what the hell the Pokemon is doing in a place like this, so he falls off the edge and lands in the water. Ash tries to swim back to the beach, but he finds that he is stuck in the middle of a large sea. Meanwhile, Lucian is gone, presumably through that hole in the wall. For the first time in Ash's life, he is alone, and it makes him feel a little claustrophobic. He looks around him and is shocked to see that, as if on cue, Pokemon of all sorts come out from the wall. He runs into the sea and is attacked by a Starmie and a Scyther, but manages to dodge them, then suddenly sees two Pokeballs in the sky. He grabs one and thinks, great, it's the great Lucian, he's finally after me. Lucian turns around to face him and yells, shoot the Pokeball, you useless bastard. Ash gets caught in the Pokeball's grabby vines and is trapped. Inside, there are four lights blinking and a low, repeated sound. Ash tries to put up a fight, but Lucian has a sudden attack of conscience and tries to save him. Lucian grabs Ash and tries to throw him out of the Pokeball, but in the process of doing so, Ash falls back out of the ball. Lucian tries again and is successful. Ash is now in a sort of time warp and doesn't know what to do. At this point, Ash notices a shadow behind Lucian. Lucian gets distracted, so Ash tries to bite Lucian to get his attention. What is with this kid? But before he can do that, the shadow runs away. Ash turns around, but sees Lucian suddenly slip into the water. Lucian is now only half submerged, but the shadow goes back to the Pokeball, taking Ash with him. Back at the campfire, Ash's Pokeball is ringing like crazy, but in the face of this darkness, he doesn't want to pick it up. Everyone else notices that the people they met at the Blackthorn Gym, the trio from Viridian, Bulbasaur and Squirtle, and Pikachu are missing. Ash realizes that it is Lucian, and he is coming back to attack him. Ash tries to swim back to the beach, but instead the pressure inside his Pokeball makes him sink deeper into the depths of the sea. He can't breathe and needs air, but he can't do anything about it. Ash tries to search for an exit, but he is too deep and submerged for that. Suddenly, the Pokeball stops ringing and Ash is nearly unconscious from lack of air. He sees a light coming closer and dives through the water. He starts to resurface, but he's no longer in the sea. He is in an underground city, the inner caves of which are made of stone and lit by candles. The whole place has a dark, spooky atmosphere. Ash is panicking, but finds himself in an empty room with a light coming from the door. He goes towards it and finds Lucian walking towards him. Lucian has seen Ash's Pokeball and realizes what has happened. He drags Ash into a room filled with coffins and Lucian locks the door behind him. Ash tries to push Lucian away but then notices that the room is not empty. Three Pokemon stand before Lucian, staring him in the face. Alakazam. Ash notices that it has a terrifying gaze, like a skull. Lucian taunts Ash and tells him that he's trapped in his Pokeball and that he's going to be his enemy. He says that Ash is his enemy now. Machamp. This guy looks like he is frozen in the same pose as a statue. Lucian tells Ash that he is in his Pokeball too, and that he is the only one that's not a prisoner. Lucian looks incredibly proud of himself. Gengar. Ash recognizes this as the ghost Pokemon that attacked him before with glowing red eyes. This time, however, he's staring right into Ash's eyes. Ash tells him that he's just like the other Pokemon he sent out, and that he's going to finish him off. Lucian tells Ash that he has him outnumbered, but that he'll manage. He says that they are both Pokemon and that they are equal in the game. Ash isn't having it and charges at Lucian, who yells that he's been waiting for him. He was waiting for... This Pokemon. He tells Ash that the game is real and that his Pokemon, as well as his, will stop fighting. As Lucian mentions how much has happened to Ash and that he is just a pawn, the lights in the cave go out. The floor begins to shake and a huge boulder hits the cave wall. The boulder is, in fact, Lucian having finally awoken from his time travel. He grabs Ash who tries to get away and crushes his throat. 
Lucian smiles, <laughs> knowing what he has done, and a huge dust cloud rises up from the cave. Lucian then flies away, leaving Ash to die. Ash is almost dead from lack of air, but through a cloud of dust, he sees Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Pikachu standing behind a door. Ash knocks on the door and they walk through. The three of them run towards Ash, who doesn't know who has saved him, but is just glad to see them. The screen fades to black, and Ash is back at the beach, exhausted but happy. He opens his Pokeball and smiles. I have no idea what to make of that. A satisfying ending, I guess? Ash was almost killed by Lucian, who captured him in a Pokeball at one point, I think? And there was a cave filled with coffins? But I, I guess that's the end? This is a much less definitive ending. You know, it's, it's ending on a very open note. Was that all a dream? Did Ash's throat just get crushed? Is he dead? Is this the afterlife? We can't really know. Unlike the last one where Ash got shot to death and killed Giovanni, that was pretty full stop, end of life. This one, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. He's either dead, that was all a dream, or his throat did get crushed and he lived. It's tough to tell, the screen fading to black and Ash being back at the beach, which I guess is a throwback to the beginning of this, is all a bit confusing. I guess the AI wanted a sort of Inception ending for this one, but I think that signals the end. What a wild story that was. Anyway, you know what time it is. This is the video outro. That's right, for those of you who are watching, thank you. Now it's time for the new video outro video. So don't forget to keep watching after this video. Like, subscribe, and comment. Well, you know what? I'm gonna stick around for another hour. He was supposed to learn to not talk. He learned how to play the sax. If that's not an ending, I don't know what is.